Welcome to Lunch and Learn presented by Coda Bears. Today's presentation is Dashboards 2. This is a continuation of our initial simple dashboard and we're going to do some additional things like add a query, I'll show you how to publish and subscribe to data, uh, we'll add a track review and we'll do some sorting and grouping and summarize, summarizations as well. Let's get started. Our initial dashboard from Dashboards 1 was of uh, open jobs. So we have that here. It, it simply delivers uh, open jobs with some basic information uh, from the Epicor training database and, and the company Epic 06. Uh, I have a additional query written here on job operations that we're going to add to this uh, to this dashboard. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click on the queries and we're going to add a new query. This query is called job ops and it contains information on the job operations. You'll see here company job number, the opera, prod standard, uh, run quantities, quantities completed, uh, setup hours, actual and estimated, uh, and then the production hours uh, estimated and completed. And it also indicates if the setup is complete and if the operation is complete. Let's go ahead and refresh this dashboard. So currently this is going to deliver, this is going to return all of the job operations. This is not linked by publishing from the open jobs and subscribing to the job ops as such that these two queries will be linked together. That's our next step here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to publish from the open jobs the top level query with a right click properties and from there that there's a tab called publish. This allows you to publish any of the fields that are available within the query. We're just going to publish the company and the job number. Those are not published and you see that little looks like a satellite dish antenna with the arrow pointing out. That is the published icon. Now we're going to subscribe from the job operations summary grid and you subscribe by filtering. We're going to filter on the company equals and you notice hey, there are other conditions available so, so you can filter uh, with a not equal to or a greater than less than begins with but we're going to go with equals for today's example now you'll see here hey, this is the job opera uh, company if we scroll down we're going to find here's the two fields that we published so we're going to select company so company equals company. I'm going to tab to add one more filter and that's going to be our job number. Again equals and again be careful that you select the one that's been, that's been published. You'll be able to tell because it shows that it's from the open jobs. And we're going to select job number here and as soon as we do that you'll notice that the returned job operations are just for the road that we're on, job number 2829. If I select 2030, it'll just return the operations there, etc., etc. Uh, now we're going to do a bit more cleanup on our, uh, on our summary here with the job operations, and we're going to, again, right-click and choose properties for that lower grid for the job ops a summary. I'm going to get rid of the company field because that's just noise now because uh, we know that we're in Epic 06. And that'll clean it up a bit more. And then we're also going to do one more thing here to our job ops. We are going to do a what's called view rules. This allows you to have uh, fields or even whole rows uh, display in different uh, formatting. Uh, you can have things be uh, you know, red or green or yellow depending on what the, uh, the rule that you have created. For this one, and we're going to select the field, we're going to find out if our setup is over the estimated hours. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to say is the 
actual a set of powers greater than, and you see here, again, you could be equal, you could be less than, you could be starts with, etc. And for these conditions, is it is our, our actual set of powers greater than our estimated set of powers? And once we create that uh, view rule, you have to push it over to the right box so that that's active. And then we have to create a new rule action uh, for what will happen when that rule is true. So I'm going to select new action. And I'm going to select just the field that I have calculated here for our calculated to over under setup. And that calculated field is basically the actual minus the estimated such that if you're positive, it's good. If you're negative, it's bad. And we're going to say for our style here, we're going to go with error. That'll make it red. Warning would make it yellow. OK makes it green. You can make it invisible, disabled. You can, can also uh, do some other uh, control things that are beyond the scope of today's discussion. We're going with error. Again, once you create that, that action, you have to push it over to the right into the box, and that makes it valid. Now, when we do that, right away, we will see that there is, I believe, on uh, 2111 has some overs, and right there. So our setup hours is two hours over our estimated. So our over-under is two, and that displays red because that's to the bad. And the same thing, A for op uh, 40 here as well. Okay. Now we're going to add what's called a tracker view, and this allows us to track the row th that we're on within the particular query that we have the tracker view set up on. We're going to set this tracker view on the open jobs qu query. So we're going to right click on the query and we're going to say new tracker view. From here, we can select whatever columns th that we want to be in the tracker view. I'm going to clear them all. And then I'm just going to select job number, part number, revision, and our description. And you notice that we have an option to have to prompt. We're, we're going to select prompt on just the job number that allows us to prompt and enter a job number to basically search and filter by it. And we're going to leave the other ones just as read only. And once you say OK here, it's going to create a new grid. And there's the job number and the row that we're on. If I select this row to a 99, you see uh, that's going to populate with our job part rev and description here. Uh, I can also go in here and put in a job that I want to filter by. And I just refresh. And it's going to take us to just that record. And we just have that data displayed at the bottom in the job ops. Now, this is kind of a wonky here to have this in the center, so let's put it at the top. We can just select this and bring it up to our top here. These can be hard to get in there. Got to find your place over a bit. There we go. And now we will also clean up a bit here our real estate such that we have more room for our open jobs. Now, if we clear out and have the have the prompted field for job number empty and we refresh, that's going to return all records of the open jobs. And we still have the filter here with the subscription on job operations that's just going to display whatever row that, that, we, that we happen to be on here. All right. Now let's talk a little bit about grouping and summarizing. Like any grid in Epicor 10, you can right click on the header row and you can say show group by. And then we can group our results based on whatever field that we choose. For instance, on part number, if we wanted to see if we have multiple jobs for one part, look down. Oh, here's one that has a two jobs. And again, you can just select that row, and it will display in the, uh, the relevant operations. We'll do the same thing here. And you can see here, we actually have six uh, jobs for that particular part. Once you're done with uh, grouping, you can just drop that back into the into the grid. And the reason we're doing this within the 
developer mode of the dashboard is when we deploy it then that'll already be there and you could simply within the dashboard right click and do that but if you know that you're going to want to have that available when you deploy the dashboard this will go with it now on the lower grid we're going to go ahead and we're going to right click and we're going to say show summaries uh, then on any numeric field you'll see the little summation symbol here and we can go to that and we can select different types of summaries the average the count the maximum we're going to go with the sum here so we're going to see the sum of the of the hours i'm going to do the same thing for all of the fields on the hours for setup and for production there we go so now when we go to any record we're going to see the, the summation here's all of the production hours that are currently on the uh, these operations here's all the setup hours uh, and there's or, there's the estimated there's the overage just the actual right so I'm going to save this and we're going to go out now and we're going to deploy this dashboard and that's from our tools deploy dashboard and then we're going to do the smart client app which will make a uh, uh, an assembly reference so it has a DLL we're going to test the app to make sure everything works that'll build that DLL and it'll pop up and with our dashboard how it's going to display let's let's go ahead and refresh it with everything here that looks nice let's go ahead to the one record that we know has some overages and that works fine uh, you could have these display in green and when you're and when you're negative and do the same thing uh, for your over under on your production that way you can see which ones are, are to the bad and which are to the good for today's purposes we're just gonna go this far we have now uh, deployed that day or I have to deploy it still and then I'm going to put it on the menu so we can run it from the application we're gonna go out to our menu maintenance we're gonna put this on our production management job management let's go with reports so we're gonna go out here we're gonna put on a new menu we're gonna ID it as UD open job dashboard we're gonna name it And we're going to type a display last in the sequence. There, there is there last in report sequence, and we have to select this as a dashboard assembly. And then we go out to our dashboard here. We select, look for open, open DMR should be right down here. There it is, our open jobs, and we're going to save that. Now we have to quickly. I go out of the application and back in to be able to see any changes on the menu. And this dashboard should be ready to go. We're going to surf out to production management, job management, and reports. There it is the last one on the list as we had planned and there's our dashboard let's go ahead and make sure it works as expected we'll put in 2111 and everything looks great so there you have it dashboards too there is uh, many more features in dashboards that makes them extremely useful in Epicor particularly in Epicor 10 and this presentation was done on Epicor 10 to 600. I thank you for your time.